Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about this hill record, having fun with Elvis on stage. I think you're going to like it very much. And it goes something like this. Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. On today's very special episode, we're going to be talking about this classic 1974 live album, Having Fun with Elvis on Stage. Now, I, I use the word classic a little loosely because actually it is often considered one of the worst albums ever made, but it's fun to talk about. You know, it... In some ways, it's a revolutionary live album because it turns the whole concept of a live album on its head. You know, the vast majority of live records feature songs with music, and they've kind of cut out the in-between time between one song, you know, the transition time, some of the banter with the audience or the band kind of tuning up, getting ready to go into the next song. But no, 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 no. This record cuts out all the songs. And all it is, is the in-between time between songs. That's right. Elvis telling jokes. Uh, a lot of non sequiturs. Joking with the band. The band warming up, tuning up. Elvis going into a song, but then it doesn't actually go into the song. Just goes into the next little time between songs. Now, I I was actually for this episode, I was gonna count for you, but I, I don't know. I just I didn't do it. How many times Elvis says well on this record? You know, over under, I, I I don't know. I would estimate at least 60 to 70 times. Well, well, well. He does all, you know, kind of the whole range. Because he's about to go into a song, and then it cuts off, and then it's just more in-between song banter. It's an amazing record. Now, <laughs> we're doing this video, you know, all in fun. I actually really do like Elvis a lot. You know, but I, but I, do, I am going to talk about this record here, but just, just real quick, little, you know, disclaimer. I really do like, I've, I've always liked Elvis a lot. I've really kind of gotten into him recently. Um, you know, part of it was a... Uh, a trip we took to Graceland, and, or our family over the over the summer, and that was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that Elvis lived there, it's just this uh, incredible time capsule of mid to late seventies excess. What's that you say? Want to see some pictures? All right, I'll show you some pictures I took at Graceland. Here's the outside. You go in, look to the right, there's this beautiful front room, mostly in white. And you got a little close up there, you can see his piano back there. Here's the kitchen. All the modern appliances of the mid-70s. If you look on the counter there, there's uh, it's one of the early earliest microwaves you could buy. Pretty awesome. Uh, you got his TV room, all the wonderful yellows of the 70s. You can see in there, he's got three TVs in there that he can have on simultaneously. Supposedly, he got that idea from LBJ, who used to have three TVs in the Oval Office so he could watch all three network news simultaneously. Elvis was a big football fan, so he thought, why don't I have all these TVs in here so I can watch all the games simultaneously? That's a good idea. Here's his billiard room or pool room. I really dig this room. That's pretty cool. Here's the den. Look at that shag carpet. He actually recorded some albums in that room. On a more serious note, his final resting place, which you know sounds kind of cheesy, but w when you do stand there, I mean, it really is kind of a serious, humbling experience. And then, unfortunately, in that same garden area there, you have the more recent uh, grave for uh, Lisa Marie. So, that's not all, though. 
you go there, you can see his planes, his cars, and even his jumpsuits. Look at that wall of jumpsuits. Awesome. Anyway, it's an excuse for me to show you some of my Graceland pictures. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about this, having fun with Elvis on stage. Now, this is considered one of the worst albums ever. There was a great book by uh, uh, was it Jimmy Gutterman and Owen O'Donnell. It's just hard to read my notes with these shades on, but i got to keep them on. And uh, there's a book called The Worst Albums in Rock and Roll History or something like that. The Worst, yeah. I used to have it. I, I think I purged it or something. It was it's really funny if you can find it because they go through all these terrible albums. There's some Billy Joel in there. And, uh, but they named this as the worst album ever made. <laughs> now, you can't blame Elvis for this one. though. This is not his fault. Uh, this was the brainchild of uh, Colonel Tom Parker, and his manager, Carnival Barker, Colonel Tom Parker. So here's the deal. Parker was looking through the contract with RCA. Now, Parker had a huge chunk of Elvis's merchandising. You know, the, the lunch boxes and the shirts and the, you know, whatever. The action figure, you know, whatever. But RCA, of course, owned the rights to Elvis's music. So the Colonel wanted to put out an album where he could profit from it and not have to give all the money over to RCA. So he started looking through the contracts. He thought he found a pretty ingenious loophole there. Because the contract said something to the effect of RCA owns all of Elvis's recorded music. So the colonel starts thinking, is like, you know, I could put out an album with no music. But it's still Elvis, so people are still going to buy it, whatever the hell it is. And that's what this is. I don't remember how long, I don't know, 25 minutes, however long this record is, but the colonel, I think, hired someone to spit, who I don't think spent any more than maybe 45 minutes putting this together, basically going through tapes of early to mid-70s uh, Elvis shows and splicing out and cutting out all the in-between song banter. And that's all this is. <laughs> so the colonel puts it out and sold it at, at concerts, at shows, you know, the merchandise booths or whatever. Um to unsuspecting fans who thought they were maybe picking up a new live album. Well, they were picking up a live album. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's it's astounding. It's like a zen. I don't know. It's astounding to listen to this thing. Uh, <laughs> it's just sort of drunken mumbling and jokes and laughing and the band playing, just kind of getting ready to play songs. And he's like, well, well, well. And then it goes into a song, but then it stops before the song starts. And then it's just like, I mean, it's, it's incredible. And you might think, okay, well, maybe somebody could have done something with this, you know, put it together in a smart way where a story is told. And there is like, like, I don't know, this two minute segment where he kind of coherently reminisces about his early days and, you know, being on the Ed Sullivan show and filming from the waist up and all that. But that's about it. Everything else, it's almost like they took these little segments and put them in a hat, you know, and shuffled them up and then randomly put them on here. There's like no logic or reason or story being told here. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's amazing. Now, the colonel didn't get what he wanted because RCA said, au contraire, what this contract says is we own any recordings of Elvis, music or not. And so RCA was able to reap the profits. RCA then took it and actually reissued it. And then, you know, this is a reissue, obviously, because they did at least put this warning on here, a talking album only, which wasn't on the original when the colonel put it out. Yeah. Legendary. Now. I told you guys that I, you know, I've I've actually been uh, really enjoying some Elvis, especially lately. And well, for instance, you want to do a deep dive? Try reading these two books. <laughs> this this is the kind of legendary two-volume biography by Peter Gralnick. 
and uh, it starts with The Last Train to Memphis, The Rise of Elvis Presley, and then the second volume is The Unmas Unmaking of Elvis Presley, Careless Love. I'm, I'm about this far into the first one. It is remarkable. It, it, it's, it's an engrossing read. I mean, it's down to, you know, pretty much every day of Elvis's life almost, but it's, it's a fascinating read. So I'm, I'm sort of kind of into the Elvis thing right now. But uh, I, so, you know, I, I, I wanted to include in this video some positive stuff, too. We're just kind of having fun with the having fun with Elvis on stage album. But uh, I wanted to have um, kind of a contrast and show you my favorite. So you know, this, this, this video could be sort of the worst and the best. At least my favorite Elvis record. And so I wanted to say something about that one, too. Now, I mean, there are some astoundingly great, you know, I mean, obviously, you get the, the Sun Sessions, those original Sun Sessions are essential for any rock and roll collection you know, from Elvis in Memphis. There he is, sort of a very uncool yellow suit, but it's Elvis, it's all right. This is a great record. It's a great record. But... My favorite Elvis record. Now, this has been put out in different forms and versions. This is a more recent one that I found that is fantastic. This one's entitled The King in the Ring. You can see there. Uh, and, and it's the kind of complete, uh, you know, from his 1968 uh, comeback. Look at that. Black leather. So awesome. This is the complete, you know, the, 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 the small, kind of, you know, unplugged, you know, shows that he did. He did two of them, whether it was a 6 p.m. show and it was an 8 p.m. show, you know, that was on that that amazing 1968 NBC comeback special, right? The real famous special. Oh, check this out. Here's a photo from my trip to Graceland. Look at that. That's the actual uh, leather suit that he wore on that comeback special. That's pretty cool. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, ain't awesome. That's so badass. That leather suit. The, the sideburns going. And so there was this whole special, but part of it was this kind of intimate concert setting where, you know, he has this live audience kind of in the round here. Elvis, original guitar, Scotty Moore is there. Uh, J.D. Fontana is there on drums. Or actually, he's kind of beating on the back of a guitar for the, for the rhythm. And Elvis is just loose, cutting loose. And, you know, th this is something special, I think. Uh, well, you know, that, that NBC special, this was one of the few times that Elvis basically took control and told Colonel Parker no. Because Colonel Parker wanted to do this kind of cheesy Christmas-themed special, and Elvis was like, uh-uh. We're going to do it this way. And Elvis, for the first time in a long time, because this is, you know, the end of the 60s, you gotta, you got to remember what was happening with Elvis. You know, he'd, he'd been all these movies, these you know, these pretty bad movies. Meanwhile, the whole rock and roll world had passed him by, right? I mean, the Beatles and, the, you know, you got the late 60s going and psychedelic stuff. All that stuff's happening. And Elvis is just kind of stuck in these, you know, sort of bad Hollywood movies. And he's like, I'm going to take control. I'm going to remind everyone who I am, you know, <laughs> the king of rock and roll. And at least for a night and maybe for a little while afterwards in the afterglow, he was. He took it back. You know, and and especially with these little intimate shows. Now it's interesting. He he's you he, know he's a little nervous, a little on edge. You know, he's 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 got something at for the first time in a long time. You know, something at risk here. You know, he's putting himself out there again. You know, and uh, got something to prove. You know, and, and it's kind of interesting. You listen to these. I mean, he. he a lot of times he'll stop a song halfway through. He'll forget lyrics and kind of laugh and, and, and joke around with the band. But when he dials in, I mean, it's it's visceral. You know, stuff like, uh, baby, what you want me to do? One night. That's the one. And suppose he had a little cold or something going on. And so there's a little raspiness to his voice. It just adds some grit. And... Uh, this is a cool set, this, because it's uh, the first record is the 6 p.m. show, and then the second record is the 8 p.m. show. I slightly prefer the 8 p.m. But, yeah, as far as my favorite, you know, Elvis on record, I think it would be this, at least from start to finish. So we were going to look at the bad, but I also want to look at the great. 
because it is Elvis. All right, guys. What do you think of all this stuff? You heard these? What are your thoughts on uh, Elvis's recorded material? Thanks for watching, guys. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate it. Like the videos. Hit the bell for notifications. And thank you. Thank you very much.